Will you pray with me? Holy God, by your Spirit you have called us into this place. And so as we are gathered here, we pray now that your spirit might move and work among us. Oh God, I pray you'll remove anything from me that would keep your word from being truly said. And I pray, O oh Lord, open all of our ears, open our hearts, so that we might be prepared to receive what you have made ready for us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A couple weeks in our Wednesday night Bible study, we were reading from the Gospel of Matthew, and we were reading another passage on forgiveness. It seems like Jesus talks about this a lot, if you read the Gospels. It comes up over and over again. He, he brings it up all the time. It's almost, as like we, it's almost like we we have a hard time hearing it, and it needs to be repeated to us again and again. In that Bible study, we were talking about uh, that from our, from our uh, Lord's Prayer, where it says, you know, forgive those who trespass, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Right? Forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we talked about how we are basically praying in that prayer that God not forgive us if we aren't willing to forgive others. And I made a comment, kind of a line, a throwaway line in the midst of that Bible study, you know, Christianity is not for wimps. Christianity is hard. It is hard to follow this path of Jesus. It is hard to do the things we know that we are supposed to do. I know it's hard because I, I have preached on forgiveness before, I've taught on forgiveness before, and yet I know for so many of us it is so hard to listen, to do, to follow what Jesus says very clearly, forgive. I've known people, I've counseled on their deathbeds in hospice in their dying days, who have talked about the pains they cannot forgive, have talked about the injuries and hurts they have received from other people, and even there as they knew they were preparing to go stand before the one who said you must forgive, they've said I cannot do it. I know people who hold on to these things even when they aren't near those times in their lives where there is a hurt or an injury, a wound, a pain, a real thing that someone has done to hurt us. And we say, I know I'm supposed to forgive, but I can't let go. It is hard to follow. It is hard to be a Christian. This is what the disciples knew that day. Jesus was offering this teaching and he said to them, if someone comes to you and sins against you, rebuke them, Tell, point out their sin to them. And if they come and ask for forgiveness, you must do it. Even if they do that seven times in one day where they sin against you and come back and repent and say, I'm sorry, forgive me. Every time, he says, you must forgive. And the disciples' answer is, we don't have enough faith for that, Jesus. Lord, give us more faith. We can't do that, Jesus. And I think we know how that feels. There are lots of ways in our life, in our faith, where Jesus clearly gives us things that he calls us to do. And our response is often, I can't do it, God. I don't have enough faith to do it. And here's where we need to hear what Jesus says in this gospel passage. As he says, in short, if you're a Christian, you forgive. If you are a Christian, that is just what you do. It isn't some extraordinary miracle that you are able to forgive. If you follow me, you will forgive. You see, our faith is all about forgiveness. Everything Jesus did was about forgiving us. See, God created us all. And his desire for us was that we would live in mercy and goodness, in honesty with one another, that we would love one another, that we would support one another, that we would celebrate for each other when things go well, that we would cry and mourn for each other when things go bad. 
God created us to be people of peace and joy and love, and we so often are not. We so often are caught up in our own envy and our own anger, our own resentments, our own sense that we've been treated wrong and someone needs to pay for it. We get caught up in our sin and in our addictions and in those compulsions that drive us that we say we can't overcome and we say that God is not strong enough to help us with. We fall short of the glory of God as we say every Sunday. And Jesus came to forgive us for that. Jesus came and walked upon this earth so that we might be forgiven. Jesus was nailed to that cross so that by his blood we might be forgiven. In this gospel passage, we're in the late chapters of Luke. Just a little while later, he's going to be arrested, Jesus is. He's going to be beaten and unjustly tried. An innocent man whipped and scourged and abused and humiliated and nailed to a cross. And in the Gospel of Luke, we will read those words as the Romans were executing him, were murdering him, were nailing him to the cross by hand and by foot as he was lifted up in blood and agony. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Jesus in this passage isn't even asking us to go quite that far. He's not asking us to forgive people who don't acknowledge they're wrong. He's saying when someone comes to you and says, I am sorry for what I did, that we forgive. Today we gather around this table and we will share bread and we will share the juice of the vine together and we are reminded of that meal where Peter, sat, where Peter and Judas sat with Jesus Peter, the one who would betray him three times before the night was out and deny that he knew him. Judas, who had already betrayed him to the officials who would hand him over for crucifixion. And the Lord forgave Peter and brought him back into the fellowship. And you know, I truly believe that he would have forgiven Judas Judas, in his grief over what he did, hung himself and died before the Lord could see him again. But I truly believe if he'd gone to Jesus and repented of what he'd done, that he would have been forgiven because Jesus came to forgive us. Christians forgive. We forgive. And so we are called this day to forgive. Some of us gathered here as I'm speaking, you're nodding. Some of us I've gathered here as I'm speaking know of that feeling in your heart, of that thing you haven't been able to let go of. And today you are invited to let go. Today you are invited to hear the words of Jesus and to forgive. You know, this isn't, Christianity isn't something that we just get participation trophies for. If we come to church and we sit in the pews and you sit through my sermons and endure them and you just come every Sunday, that won't get you into heaven. If you follow Jesus is how we get there. And so we can't just kind of just show up and get there. We have to actually follow him and get there. And the devil doesn't want you to. That voice in your head, in your heart, that heavy feeling you have that tells you, I can't forgive what this person has done to me. I can't forgive this thing that's happened to me. That voice is not Jesus. It is the devil trying to keep you in chains. And so this day, Jesus offers you the way of freedom, the way of forgiveness, freedom for you to let go of that grip they have on you. And so today I invite you. We're going to gather around this table in a minute. And you're going to be invited to come forward to receive the bread and the blood. You're going to be invited to come forward in a few minutes after we remember the story of what he said and what he offered for us. And I invite you this day, here today, be free of that thing in you that won't let you forgive. Here today, set yourself free here today, if there's someone in this sanctuary 
that you need to forgive, move about while we're taking communion and offer forgiveness. Here today, as we're gathered in the sanctuary, if there's someone here who you need to seek forgiveness from, while we're receiving communion, find that person and ask for forgiveness. Because Christians forgive. Jesus forgave us. We forgive each other. This is the way of the kingdom. Maybe we might be able to show what the kingdom looks like today. Let us pray. Holy well, God, like the disciples, we often feel like you ask us to do things we can't, and, and Lord, you're right, we can't. But we know in you and with the Holy Spirit we can. And so, our God, I pray this day, maybe it's only a handful of us here today, maybe it's only one, but there are those of us gathered here today who need to be set free from our inability to forgive, our inability to trust enough. There are those of us this day who need to seek forgiveness, God, and so I pray, O oh Lord, you might let us hear the good news that you offer to all the world, that you have come to forgive and that we wage war against the devil not with arms and armaments and violence, but with the peace of forgiveness. And so call us to your peace this day, we pray. Lord, help us to forgive so that we might be your people. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. And so it is appropriate that we speak of these words of forgiveness as we gather around this table. This table and remember the peace, we remember the peace that Jesus Christ made for us and with us and with the world. How that night he gathered them at the table. Peter who would deny him, Judas who had betrayed him and he offered the bread. He took it and he said, thank you father and he broke it and he gave it to all of them. And he said, take, eat. This is my body. And when the meal was over, he took that cup and he gave thanks for it. And he gave it to each of them. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and the many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you gather in remembrance of me. And so we pray as we are gathered here this day around this table and with these people, that, oh God, the Holy Spirit might pour out and work among us. Lord, pour out your Spirit and make what we will receive here not to be just simply bread and juice, but the very body and blood of Christ, so that as we come forward in faith, even the tiniest amount of faith to receive it, we might meet the grace of Jesus Christ, make us one with him through this meal and one with each other, so that we might go out in ministry to all the world until that day when we feast with him again at his heavenly banquet. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Kathy, will you please come help? As we are gathered here and we lift the single loaf, we are reminded that there is one body of Christians throughout the world gathered together in his name, this day, if you are here, if we are worshiping with others in churches around the world on this Communion Sunday, we remember our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who calls us all to be a single body and who died and suffered for us. And in the cup we receive, the blood of forgiveness, the cup of the new covenant poured out for you, for me, and for the entire world. In this, our church, we invite all who are gathered here this day to receive from the table. If you want to know Jesus better, if you want to live in peace with one another, that's the only condition on coming forward. And so I will invite you in a moment to receive. I'm going to serve Kathy first. I invite you as you come forward, if you are received from the receiving line, that you hold out your hands and I'll place a piece of bread in it. You're invited to dip it in the cup and then place it in your mouth. And then I'd invite you to come pray at the rail this morning. I'd invite you to pray at your pews as you return to them. 
If you need the individual servings of communion, if you cannot come forward or do not wish to, there are some located at the back of the sanctuary. Ushers will assist you with those. Kathy, this is the body of Christ that was broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ poured out for you. We have gluten-free bread as well for those who need that. Just let me know. You're invited to come forward. The table is open to all. Please make your way forward.